Okay. Uh, good morning. I don't know. I don't know why I'm saying good morning. Uh, it's morning over here, but uh, who knows when you're gonna watch this? So this is um this is the first lesson for um, advanced algebra trig for chapter five point one. We had some people absent yesterday because they were taking the practice SAT. So hopefully you guys uh, did well with that. Um, we start off by taking a look at some pictures here. Okay, and these are the pictures we did. So what do the following pictures have in common, right? All right, did you notice anything about these particular pictures? Um, hopefully. Uh, all of these have, uh, have some sort of a parabolic shape in them. So the building has a front parabolic shape. The flashlight has a parabolic shape when you put it against the wall. Here's another bridge facing downwards. And then the golden gate uh, sort of in the middle hat takes sort of the shape of a parabolic form. Some people think it's a hyperbolic cosine. I think that's, I think that's a debate going on right now, but don't quote me on that. Uh, then we had some uh, some review, some practice problems. So what I want you to do is take a look at this and uh, s write down what you think it is, and then uh, press play again. So I'll pause this and see what you come up with. So number one is uh, is what is a parabola? You know, where have you heard that term before? Number two, factor a difference of two cubes, and then number three, evaluate these square root. Okay, so here's some uh, some examples of uh, what some students said in class. Um, what is a parabola? A, a parabola is the curve generated when uh, graphing a quadratic function. Uh, when you factor the difference of two cubes, it becomes x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. Don't forget that. That was chapter 1 and 2 stuff. And then evaluating expression, the square root of 12 becomes 2 rad 3. The square root of 32 becomes 4 rad 2. And the negative square root of 1 becomes negative 1. So hopefully everybody got those things correct. Okay, so moving on here. Uh, 5.1, we have five boxes to talk about. So a quadratic function is a, a function in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We've seen this before. Um, to note here, a, b, and c, so the a, the b, and the c, all have to be uh, real numbers. And a cannot be zero because, of course, if a was zero, this front term here would cancel out, leaving you with a linear equation. So that doesn't, that's not what we're studying right now. Um, and from here on out, the domain for any quadratic function is going to be all real numbers. So we can just sort of take that, uh, take it and say, thanks a lot uh, for letting us know. We don't have to worry about domain anymore for a quadratic function. Okay, so here's uh, this part you don't have to write down. I just wanted to show some things to you, right? Um, what I have is a, gener a generic quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And I've, I've broken up the a, the b, and the c independently. I wanted to talk about what they do independently, right? Um, so, let's start with the A. Um, if I move my slider to the right, take a look at that graph. What happens? It gets narrower, right? It gets narrower. But what happens if I move my slider in between 0 and 1? It kind of gets wider. Uh, let's, put the, uh, let's put the B back to 0 there. There we go. Discrete values. Um, and then let's put the C back to 0. There we go. Okay. So, uh, moving the A in between a 0 and 1, notice I get a wide parabola, right? Moving it beyond the 1, I get a narrower parabola. And then if I move it into negative territory, look, the whole entire parabola bends downwards, right? So let's move this up like that. Uh, opens downwards. So the A value plays an important role in telling you which way it opens up or down and how wide or how narrow it's going to be. Again, if you multiply by a number in between 0 and 1, you get a wider parabola. If you go beyond 1, you get a narrower parabola. And then, of course, same thing for the negative land. If you're in between negative 1 and 0, you get a wide parabola opening down. Beyond that, you get a skinny parabola opening down. So that's kind of what, uh, what the A does, okay? Now let's take a look at the B. So I'll put this back to discrete. So notice A is 1, so we have our general, our general quadratic. Um, the B, if I move it to the right, notice my parabola starts to dip down on the left-hand side, right? The, the bottom of it is the, on the left-hand side of the y-axis. If my B is negative, it's on the right-hand side. And that will be the case as long as A is positive. As soon as A becomes negative, this whole thing reverses itself, right? Now that B is negative, I'm on the left side. And if B was positive, then I'd be on the right side. So taking a look at A, right? If A is equal to 1, right? So A is positive, then my parabola sort of dances on, on either side of the y-axis. And it'll be opposite. So right now, if B is positive, notice it dances to the left of the y-axis. If B is negative... It dances to the right. And if I reverse that for A, if I make a negative 1, notice that my B is negative, now I'm on the left. B is positive, now I'm on the right. So it kind of depends on which one A is going on. So I'll put these back to, I'll put B back to, uh, to 0 there. Put A back to 1. 
And let's talk about what the C does, okay? So the C, if I move it to the right, my graph sort of moves up. If I move it to the left, my graph sort of moves down. So the C value seems to tell me something about the Y axis there, right? What's going on with the Y axis? Moves it straight up, moves it straight down. So there's kind of all the pieces do of the, of the, of the quadratic function. <clears throat> okay, we had a big application here now. Uh, before you start this, be sure you have your... Okay, so uh, be sure you have your graphing calculator for this particular part. We did a, uh, of, of quadratic of quadratic functions. So this is going to take a while, so um, follow along uh, with me. Okay, so let's say uh, you are you are a uh, a distributor for calculators. Okay, uh -huh, funny calculators, and um, the price that you pay per calculator calculators you buy. Okay, so if you buy eleven thousand one hundred calculators, then the price you're going to pay is sixty dollars. That's the cheapest, right? If you buy 10,115 calculators, your price goes up because you bought less calculators, right? And as you go down the list here, if you only buy 6,439 calculators from your distributor, well, then you've got to pay $90 per calculator because you're only buying this many, right? We've seen this before. If you've ever gone to Costco, right, um, the more mayonnaise you buy, the cheaper it is, right? You can buy the uh, the one-gallon thing of mayonnaise for 5 bucks, or you can buy the, like, seven-gallon thing of mayonnaise for, like, four fifty. So the more you buy, right, in quality in quantity depends on the on the price that you are is gonna di dictate what price you pay, right? So not depends on, but dictates. So so what we're gonna do is uh, the first thing that we're supposed to do is, uh, is is to put this information into a list. Okay, so I'll set you up on how to do that, and then I'll pause it and put all the stuff in there. So if we go to um, stat, okay, we're gonna push edit. So stat edit. Notice I have L1 and L2. L1 is gonna be the price per calculator, the X. L2 is going to be the number of calculators. I'm going to put that into my... Okay, so um, hopefully you paused, the, you paused the video and you went back and you plugged in. And notice I did uh, L2 is the number of calculators and I have a list there of stuff. And then L1 is the price per calculator, okay? So what we're going to do with this information, right, is we're going to, we're going to set up a list and enter the list into your calculator. We did that step one. We're going to find what's known as a line of best fit, okay, or a linear regression line. And this is the linear. We're going to create a linear equation between the price per calculator and the number of calculators that we get. And we should get this in red over here. I already did it ahead of time. So we should get that. Let me show you how to do that, okay? So bring up your calculator, okay? Um, what you're going to do is you're going to hit second. And you're going to hit, uh, no, sorry, don't hit second. Uh, just hit second again here. Sorry, hit uh, stat. Sorry about that. Hit stat and go over to calculate. Stat, calculate, and if you go down on to number four, it says lin reg ax plus b. This is a linear regression line, and it's the line of best fit for us, for the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to push enter one time. Push enter again, and we should get this, right? Look, I got negative 152.6. I should have rounded that to point to 153, and then plus the 20208. I just can't. I just crossed off all the decimal points there, so we could get round this a little bit better and, and make it work for us. But this is a linear regression line. Okay, now that we have that, I have it written down over here. I'd like to to graph these things. Okay, uh, this this scatter plot. So hit second y equals, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our plots on. So push enter go to on right and this is going to create a scatter plot and the X list is L1 and the Y list is L2 and these are the marks that we're going to create so scatter, pl scatter plot is on uh, the type L1 is the X list L2 is the Y list now a fast way to do this is to push zoom and then go down to option which I think is 9 yes yeah, stat zoom stat so by pushing zoom stat or you can push zoom 9 and pushing enter you get a scatter plot of your data, and that looks like a linear relationship, right? That's exactly modeling the data that we had over here. So if I buy 6,439 calculators or whatever, uh, it costs me 90 bucks to do that. So that would be this point over here, right? As we move, uh, as we move out, uh, oh, sorry, other point over there. So we have this nice linear regress, uh, linear uh, relationship here, right? Um, and then if we were, what we're going to do now, okay, so I'm going to early in the morning. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a revenue, all right? And the revenue, of course, uh, is, you know, how much can you sell these calculators for and make and make money from it. turns out that that function is quadratic. So we start with a linear function, all right, which is a linear regression line that our calculator gave us, and we're going to turn that into revenue. And here's how you do that, right? Your revenue 
has to be the number of calculators that you have multiplied by the price per calculator, right? And in this case, y represents the number of calculators that we have. But now we know that y is a function of x over here, function of price. So the number of calculators we have, we're going to take negative uh, 152x and plop it in here and multiply by x, which is the price per calculator, and this function becomes quadratic. As you can see, x times an x gives us an x squared. And this is going to represent our revenue function. Okay, so again, y is the number of calculators represented by our linear regression line, plugging that in, multiplied by the price per calculator, which is x, gives us a quadratic revenue function. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to graph the revenue function down here. I just rewrote it down here. So that's what we're going to do. So pull up your calculator, okay, uh, turn it on, go to y equals, all right, and punch in, punch in our revenue function. Here's how you do it. So we're going to do x times negative, make sure you use the negative signs, the one below the 3, 152x plus 20208, close parenthesis. All right. Now, before we can graph this, uh, we want to turn our plots off. Oh, my cut. Okay, so my computer is going to die there. So, uh, before we can graph this, right, what we're going to do is we're going to go second stat plot, and we're going to turn our plots off. So, go to option four, turn your plots off, and just put enter again. Now, we can go back to y equals, and our, fun our, our revenue function is still in there. And what we're going to do now is hit zoom. And one thing this calculator is really good at is giving us a, a fit. So if you go down to option zero, it says zoom fit. So if we push enter, we should see a curve that looks like this. And you should see this on your calculators as well, right? Okay, this is pretty good. This is a quadratic. It's opening downward. A is negative. There must be a maximum point here, right? And that maximum point is something that I'm looking for. That's what I want to do. So I want to make this, I want to go a little higher so I, can, so I can figure out a maximum point. And the way you do that is you just change your window. Okay. Now, notice in the window, our x minimum is 57, and our maximum is 93, right? That corresponds to our calculators up in the very beginning over here, right? It went below the price per calculator, 60, and the highest, which was 90. So that's where we got that information from. So let me bring this back up, okay? Whoop, there it goes. So that's our domain, right? 57 to 90. Now I want to make my, my max y value. just so I get a better picture of my graph. And then I'm going to hit graph. There we go. So I see this. So notice I've pushed the window up a little bit, right? Now what I want to do is I want to figure out the max revenue I can make and the price per calculator I should charge. In order to do that, we're going to calculate the maximum of this quadratic. And here's how you do it. Second, calculate. Go down to maximum. Now it's giving, asking me for a left bound. So you need to move your cursor to the left of where the highest point appears to be. So I'm pretty sure I'm to the left of the highest point. I'm going to push enter. And a little triangle appeared. Then the calculator asked me for a right bound. So I'm going to go to the right. Holy cow, super slow. There we go. Push enter. And now it says, do I want to guess? No, I don't want to guess. I just want to figure out the answer. And there we go. Okay, boom. So the maximum, 66.47. And uh, for X and for Y is 671, 650. And I asked you to interpret this with a partner. What do you think this means, right? What does this mean? Well, what it means is since this is a revenue function is that you can get the max revenue, which would be $671,650 if the price point per calculator was $66.47, okay? If you make your calculators more expensive, you lose revenue. So this is what we call the, the key price point to sell those calculators at to get a max revenue, and that's the interpretation part. All right, that was a lot there. So uh, if you need to pause that and rewind that and go back and look at it, feel free. I'm going to move on here just for time's sake. Okay, the third box was parts of the parabola. Okay, um, and there's three parts of the par parabola that we're going to talk about, right? The, we're going to talk about the vertex. The vertex is either the um, highest point or it is going to be the lowest point. And it just depends on which way the parabola opens, right? So in this case, um, my vertex is, uh, is right here, right? And it represents a low point. Uh, people call that sometimes a minimum, too. Okay? Um, the axis of symmetry is uh, the line 
is the line that goes straight down the center and through the vertex. So this is the line that passes through the vertex. I should say the x-coordinate of the vertex. So right there, uh, if I drew the axis of symmetry, it's the line that goes right through the x-coordinate of the vertex, and it splits the graph into two. That's called the axis of symmetry. Sometimes I write it as AOS, and I'm going to draw a little arrow to it like that. And then the third thing is discovering whether or not the parabola opens up or down. And the way that we do that is just by looking at the value of A. Okay, So if A is greater than 0, it implies your parabola opens up. If your A is less than 0, it implies your parabola opens down. And uh, we can clearly see that um, just by moving my, cur my, my slider back and forth. So if I go to the right my parabola is opening to the up. If I go left, negative, my parabola opens down. If you go really fast, it looks like a bird flying. It's pretty cool. All right, there you go. So that's what the, the importance of the value of A. So the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and whether or not it opens up or down the parts of the parabola. OK, graphing a, uh, a quadratic by completing the square. So here's the idea, right? If you look at this, if you look at this, f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 1. Well, we know a few things right off the bat. Okay, right off the bat, we know that it opens uh, up because um, A is positive. It's greater than 0, and A is a value of 1 here. We know that it's going to be on the right-hand side of the y-axis, or the vertex is going to be on the right-hand side of the y-axis because B is negative and A is positive, okay? So the idea is this. You can actually complete the square on any given quadratic term and create this, this little... Uh, this little expression here in highlighted form that I have here, a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And you do that by completing the square, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. What does this stuff mean, right? The h and the k is the vertex, and notice that the h is a different sign value when you come up with the vertex, but the k stays the same, okay? Make sure you notice those two things, okay? k stays the same, h changes. And of course, a greater than 0 opens up, a less than 0, it opens down. Axis of symmetry is the line x equals h. So how do you do this over here? So I'll use purple. I like purple. So um, we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus the magic number to complete the square. But then I have a minus 1, and I'm not working on two sides of the equation, so I'm going to add a magic number and subtract that same number to keep my equation balanced since I'm only working on one side of the equation. Okay, so half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So 9 goes there and a 9 goes there. Now, this will break down to a binomial x minus 3 quantity squared. Negative 1 minus 9 is negative 10. Okay, so now these two functions represent the same thing. They just look different, okay? I haven't done anything magical. I just completed the square to get me some information. Now I know the vertex is at the point 3 comma negative 10. If you think about 3 negative 10, that's on the right hand side of the y axis. So I, I got that part down. Okay, so how do I how do I graph this now, right? So um, on my on my graph, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make a big grid here so you guys can see. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to uh, 3 comma negative 10. Well I'm gonna move my graph up before I do that. Whoa having difficulties. Yeah, there we go. I'm almost there. There we go. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to go over to 3 comma negative 10. So 3 comma negative 10. This is where the vertex is going to be. And I also know that this graph opens upwards. And I know that A is a value of 1. So it has the same shape as my parent function. So I can find a couple of points here. Check it out. I can go over 1 and up 1. That point will be on the graph. And over left one and up one, that point will definitely be on the graph. Over two and up four, one, two, three, four, that point will be on the graph. Left two and up four, that point will be on the graph. My axis of symmetry goes right down the center, right through the vertex there. And that's enough information to draw my graph there, right? Now I can also do this. The y-intercept, if x is zero, y will be negative one. That's a little trick. So that means I know that this point has to be on the graph. So I can go up like that, and since this point is 1, 2, 3 units away to the left-hand side of the axis of symmetry, then I know 1, 2, 
three units on the other side also has to be a point on the axis of symmetry. So there is my, my parabola, right? And I'm going to graph this just to make sure I did it right. So it was uh, f of x. Uh, that doesn't look like an x. f of x is equal to, what, what the heck was it again? Uh, x squared minus 6x minus 1 x squared minus 6x minus 1. And if I did this right, then my graph should be a mirror image of that, putting it on there. Hey, check it out. It is. I did it right. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. Um, let me take you a fast way to find the vertex on any quadratic, okay? The fast way to do that is the first thing you want to do is identify A, B, and C. So in this case, A is negative 3. B is a positive 6, and C is a 1. Now, I know that this graph or this parabola is going to open down because A is negative. It's going to be on the right-hand side because of uh, if this is negative, then this is going to stay positive, right? So how do I find the vertex? I'll check this out. If you do negative B over 2A, here's what you get. You get negative 6 divided by 2 times negative 3. That gives you negative 6 divided by a negative 6, which, of course, is a positive 1. That right there is the x-coordinate of your vertex, 1. Awesome. Now, how do you get the y-coordinate of your vertex? This is also sometimes called the h and then the k. How do you get the, the y-coordinate? Well, you just take the 1 and you plug it back in into your original function. So that looks like this. Negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 1. That gives you a negative 3 plus 6 plus 1. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3 and 1 is 4. So there we go. That is the fast way to find the vertex. It's at 1, 4. Okay, so I, I, on my graph paper, I've plotted the vertex 1, 4. I know this graph opens downwards because A is negative. Now, an easy, easy point you can find, right, is what happens if, uh, if, uh, if x is equal to 0? Well, if x is equal to 0, then I get a point of y is equal to 1, right? Notice that it's just the, it's just the c value there. So that means that 0, 1 has to be a point on the graph. And since I know that this, this um, axis of symmetry goes through, my, goes through my vertex and splits the graph in two, then I know that this point also has to be a point on the graph. And that's enough to make a quick sketch right, of what my graph looks like. And then uh, I, I went ahead and plugged this in. So if I show that, it's exactly looking pretty good as to what my graph is doing. So as long as you have the vertex there and a couple of points, um, then, you, then you're pretty good to go. Okay. All right, so uh, last one was a U-try, so go ahead and see if you can graph, find the vertex, and find the axis of symmetry for this particular function. I'll pause it and then come back. Okay, so I found the vertex easily here by finding uh, negative B over 2A and then plugging it back in. So I identified A, B, and C. I plugged into negative B over 2A, uh, and I got 1. So the vertex is at 1 comma something. Now how do I get the other part? I take the 1, I substitute it back in for X everywhere. And I simplified and I got negative 4 here. So the vertex is at 1, comma. Okay, so I went on some graph paper here. I went 1, uh, negative 4 to the vertex. I know this thing opens down. And I also know that when x is equal to 0, y must be negative 5. So I know that the point um, on my graph here has to be 0, comma, negative 5. And since there's an axis of symmetry that goes straight down the graph, I know that that point has to be on the graph, right? And since A is a negative 1, I can also easily find, go over 2 and down uh, 4. That point will be on there. Go to the left 2, go down 4 as well. That will be on the graph too. So my graph should look something like this. And when I graph it here and show, it, show you the function, um, it looks exactly like that. Okay, there you go. Big lesson. Don't hate me.